Whatever rots your socks, whatever spins your top Whatever winds your watch, whatever flips your flop Whatever turns you on, whatever flies your flag Whatever bangs your gong or whatever swings your bag Do it after but do it well Cause nobody knows and there's no way to tell When the ride ends Greetings from Turtle Beach. Another crowded day on Hot Satip, Steve's Beach. So it's 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 awkward and clumsy to carry the phone like this. I don't bring a selfie stick out on the beach. I come out here twice a day and pick up lighters and other knickknacks of flotsam and jetsam. Ah, uh, but I I I I wanted to talk about this. Uh, so it's happened again. A guy shows up at my door. He's going through a terrible divorce and he's seeking not advice, but a shoulder to cry on, I guess. He's, he wanted to tell me a story. This has happened twice. Uh, this time, the guy emailed ahead. He got himself a hotel room in town for a couple days. He told me when he would be coming and he came over and, and we spent some time together. Lovely guy, uh, interesting guy, and uh, just a guy who needed someone to talk to. The thing that strikes me about, now I've had a couple dozen people show up, you know, fans of the channel who wanted to take a selfie in front of Boontons. Typically, they're in Turtle Beach for other business, or they're nearby, they're at uh, Kaulak or Phuket. So it's an easy drive over here, and they come and say hello. Sometimes they bring me coffee. Sometimes they bring me broccoli. That's wonderful. But these two fellas uh, came on almost uh, spiritual pilgrimages. They're both dealing with something uh, really rough in their life right now. The first guy just showed up at the door, with, dragging his suitcase, came straight from the airport. Uh, first passport he ever had in his life, first trip he'd ever taken on an airplane. And he came here. The second guy let me know he was coming, but in both cases, I felt like I disappointed these guys. You know, they, had, they came to me because they see these videos. And I say, look, after 25 years of dreaming about coming back here to live, I've done it. I've been here 14 months. It's been terrific. I have enjoyed every single minute of every single day of the last 14 months. So they see me say that in a video and they think Steve's got it figured out. Steve went through a terrible divorce. Steve came out the other side a happy man. I'm gonna go talk to Steve. And they do, and they talk to me. You know, neither one of these guys has any interest in Thailand. And and if you don't have any interest in Thailand, I, I'm not very interesting. Neither one of these guys was, there's a lighter, but I'm not gonna pick it up. Uh, I'm into this right now. <laughs> uh, neither one of these guys has any interest in Thailand, so neither one was interested in hearing Steve's lecture on the importance of Constantine Falcon in the court life of 16th century Ayutthaya. <laughs> Honest to God, they neither one was here because they had any interest in Thailand. And I think, okay, this lighter I'm gonna pick up. Ah, I don't know if that worked. But, uh, yeah. I think that, you know, I've been healed by this place. 
by doing this, and typically I do this twice a day. Uh, this is in the national park. I've ridden my bicycle down to the tin mine and just picked a cut, uh, picked a cut, a trail through the jungle that goes to the beach. It's like 50 feet or something through the mangroves. And you want to stick to the trail because there's a lot of mosquitoes and leeches in the mangroves. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, twice a day I'll come here uh, either here on the bicycle or just in front of my house and just walk the beach. Today, I think I'm doing, I don't know, I have very little sense of distance, a couple kilometers down and back, I don't know. But at any rate, uh, it, this is probably not for you. This is not gonna heal you like it healed me. Certainly, if you have no interest in Thailand, it's not gonna do anything for you. And what these guys both needed was someone to talk to. Well, you can get that back in, you know, Connecticut or California. There are people whose job it is, professionals, priests, rabbis, Boy Scout leaders, uh, elementary school counselors, psychologists, you know. And I imagine your, if you've got insurance, my insurance covered uh, therapy. So... You know, I think that it's, I'm really flattered when people show up and they think that I know something <laughs> about surviving a bad divorce. And I do, but what I know is specific to Steve Ross and certainly specific to Thailand, right? What works for me probably won't work for you. I imagine very few people watching this right now want to spend their days picking up trash on the beach and building a styrofoam <laughs> sea turtle made out of cigarette lighters to raise awareness about trash on the beach. Yeah, I don't think many people would enjoy doing that. Certainly when I look at vlogs, there's nobody else out there who's vlogging who does this. Who, who would enjoy this? Only Steve Ross would enjoy this. But I enjoy it a whole lot, man. Right? It's nice, I like this. Here, I'll give you the other. This is, that's the mangroves. Yeah, so anyway. Oh, I probably had a list of, of a dozen things I wanted to talk about today. Uh, but that, uh, that's all I can think of now. Uh, that's only seven minutes. I'll probably stick something else on here uh, when I think of it. <laughs> but thanks for listening. And listen, if you're going through a bad divorce or you've been through a bad divorce, let me be your object lesson, certainly. You can survive. You can survive very well. You can end up 65 years old on the beach of your dreams, uh, excited to wake up every day because you know exactly what you're gonna do on the Turtle Project and on the Boontongs Project and the other stuff. <laughs> and uh, you, you, you can come out the end of it a happy, contented, healthy, guy or gal but that's all that's all I can be I can't tell you how to use it I can assure you there's a turtle beach out there for you if I can find turtle beach anybody can I am incompetent at absolutely everything I have ever put my hand to and I found my turtle beach you can too it's not going to be here <laughs> But it's out there somewhere waiting for you. Oh, here's some scoots. Uh, oh no, they're not. I thought they were turtle scoots. Those are the shells, the, the panels on the back of a turtle. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that, that's all I have to say from here. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I'm not gonna say like, si subscribe and share because uh, I'm gonna come back and, and add on to this. Uh, but thanks for listening. Rainy season, hasn't rained, very strange.
not for everybody, but it suits me. Yeah. Stay off drugs, kids. Stay in school. Listen, let me tell you a story, all right? This is my 9-11 story. Everybody has one. <clears throat> Where I was on 9-11, we used to have our John Kennedy stories. Where I was when I heard John Kennedy was assassinated. Now that's been... For Americans, at least, that has been replaced by where I was on 9-11. Don't, please, fill my comment section with pages long comments outlining where you were on 9-11. I'm not interested. <clears throat> I'm sure it's fascinating. I'm sure it's fascinating, but I'm not interested, all right? This story has to do with divorce and where our heads go when we're in a place where we're forced to think about the rest of our lives. What do I wanna do with the rest of my life? But at the same time, I'm completely preoccupied with how I'm gonna get through today. I'm so miserable today. I'm in so much debt. The credit collectors are calling me constantly demanding money, they're sending, they're filling my mailbox with demands for money. I've lost all my friends because all I can talk about is my divorce. So of course, everybody's ghosted me, so I have no support network. I've borrowed money from everybody in my family, so I'm shy about contacting my family. We're concerned with getting through today, but we're also concerned with what am I gonna do with this brand new life that's starting, the, me alone in the world? How am I gonna get through this? How am I gonna raise my kids when the court has said I'm not allowed to spend time with my kids? It's a terrible head. So that's what this story's about. It just happens to take place on 9-11. So September 1st, 2001, I came home from work. I was working in an advertising agency. And I was very good at it. I won awards for my billboards and you can only fit seven words on a billboard. That's what a driver can read at 75 miles an hour. I was winning awards for seven word messages. I was getting paid buku bucks. I had to travel one week out of every four. I had to go to a different college or university in the United States and interview everybody from the provost to the newest freshman to create marketing materials. We sold college educations. That's what we did. Staymates Communications in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So on September 1st, I came home from work to find my house stripped to the walls. Not only were my wife and children gone, every stick of furniture, every toy, every pot, pan, fork, spoon, the draperies off the windows, the carpets off the floor. She took the light bulbs out of the ceiling fixtures. So when the sun went down, I was in a pitch black house with no light. I didn't carry a phone. This is uh, 2001, right? I didn't carry a phone. So I come home from work and I'm in this dark, empty house with no idea what's happened. I, 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 we were sleeping apart for a long, long time because I had come home from a business trip in the middle of the night to find my wife, my two children and her new lover asleep in our marriage bed. And Steve being the passive aggressive guy he is, I went down and slept in the basement and I, continued to sleep in the basement forever. That was my last night in our marriage bed until she left. She left the marriage bed in my clothes. That was all that was in the house. The only reason she left the marriage bed is because it was a king size bed. We had had to take the windows out of the bedroom to get the bed in there. And she didn't have the wherewithal to take the windows out. 
So I ended up with a bed at least to sleep on, not because she was being nice to me, but just because she couldn't figure out how to get out of the house. So I come home on September 1st, 2001 from work. House is stripped for 10 days. I don't know where she is. I don't know where my children are. My children are Thai citizens. She could have taken them to the airport and brought them back to Thailand. I never would have known. I called the State Department, asked them to put a bulletin at all the international airports. They said, no, we can't. Those are Thai citizens. If they wanna leave and go back to Thailand, they can. Well, on September 10th, somebody told me she had moved to a trailer out by the airport. So I went out to that trailer and tried to kick in the door. The sheriff came and manhandled me back into my car, threw me physically into my car head first. Said, get out of here, I'm gonna put you in jail. My children watched this through the pick front window of her trailer, watched their dad getting roughed up by a sheriff's deputy. September 11th, 2001, the next morning, I went to uh, work. <clears throat> I had a 35 minute commute from my house to Staymates in Cedar Rapids. And I would go down Melrose Avenue to I-80 or 318 and go north and get off in Cedar Rapids. And the office was right there at the, on uh, the off ramp. So it's, a, it's an election day, September 11th for a school board in Iowa City. So I stopped at West High, right at the intersection of the highway and the, the street. And I voted for a uh, school board and I got one of those little tin badges you put on your pocket, says I voted. And I got back on the highway to go back to work, to go to work. And as I'm on the on-ramp going on to the interstate, I used to watch a show called Bob and Tom. I used to listen to a show called Bob and Tom on the radio, a comedy show. And there's this comedian trying to tell jokes and the news lady breaks in and says, a plane has just hit tower one. And uh, it looks like a, a, a multiple engine commuter jet, is what she said. And uh, Tower One's on fire. Uh, we'll have more as we get it. Back to the comedian. <laughs> and this poor yutz goes on trying to tell jokes, right? Every 10 minutes, the news lady is breaking in to say, okay, uh, you know, it's, it's still burning, it's still burning. And then on, I think, her third interjection, uh, a second plane has hit the tower and had the second tower. And this is obviously an attack. So we're gonna go to a news service now. We're done with the comedy. And I can just imagine that comedian in the studio going, oh, thank God. And uh, I got off the off ramp as she was saying the second plane had hit and I got to work and I went inside and every, about a hundred people worked there. And everybody was in the conference room. There was great big TV in the conference room. Everybody's in there watching these towers burn. And all day long, they played a loop of planes hitting buildings all day long, right? And every silent, dead silent. Every hundred people in a conference room, shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, watching horrific death happening over and over and over and over. And I said, fuck this. And I went to my office and I went to work. I was uh, writing a view book for Davenport University in Chicago. And I went back to work. Well, unbeknownst to me, the boss, a guy named Guy Staymates, had come out and said, y'all go home. Go hug your children. Don't be here. Get out of here. And the building had emptied out. And I'm sitting alone in my office. No idea the building's empty around me. I get up to go get coffee. And I noticed the building's empty, but all the exterior doors are standing open to the street. They're not just unlocked, they're standing open in an empty building. So I closed and locked all the doors. So I go back to my desk and I'm working. I spent all day, I spent eight hours there working. And the phone rings and it's my wife, Mem, who the night before had called the sheriff on me because you know, to be honest, I was trying to kick in her front door. And I said, yeah, what is it? She said, are you watching TV? I said, no, I'm at work. She said, someone just flew a plane into the uh, uh, Pentagon. 
I said, no, ma'am, it wasn't the Pentagon. It was the World Trade Center, both towers. She said, no, 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 I just woke up and I, and I turned on the TV, it's the Pentagon. They flew a big plane into the Pentagon. I said, ma'am, listen to me. It was the World Trade Center, not the Pentagon. And she's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like for five minutes. So here's where we get in a divorce, and I suppose any other trauma in your life, but as I am the divorce guru now, let's talk about divorce. In a divorce, you get so self-centered and so laser focused, you've got blinders on, all you can see is your pain and your suffering and how this other person's hurting you and how can I hurt her back? So the whole world is in flames, right? Well, I, mean, I exaggerate to make a point, but people are flying airplanes into big tall buildings, right? And all Mem and I can do is argue. We take this as an opportunity for a fight because that's what our relationship has been for 10 years. Everything, everything was a fight. And this is the biggest fight of all. We're fighting over the children. That was the only thing I was fighting for. She had a list of things she wanted. She had 14 holidays during the year. She wanted the kids. She wanted all my money. She wanted my mother's money. She wanted my mother's property. She want, I mean, I was asking for shared custody of the kids. That was it. Didn't get it. She got everything that she wanted, except my mother's money. Because Betty Ross is a lot smarter than Steve Ross. But... My point is that we can get so blinded by our divorce that we literally don't see what's going on in the rest of the world and we can be so used to and habituated to fighting with this other person that even when we're both right, it was the Pentagon, Steve, it was the World Trade Center, ma'am, and it was a field in Pennsylvania. And, and we're like, the, the two guys trying to describe the elephant ready to punch each other's lights out because I say it's the tail and you say it's the trunk. Don't do that. <laughs> if I have any advice, if I have anything worthwhile to say, it's don't do that. Don't let your divorce wreck you more than it's going to naturally. Don't bring pain and suffering on yourself because of your attitude, because of your reaction to what's happening in your life. Your reaction is much more unhealthy than what's happening. Everybody gets divorced. My mom was divorced three times. My ex-wife's parents were divorced. How many people do you know are divorced? Are you divorced? It happens to everybody. Not a big deal, right? You hire a lawyer, you relax, <laughs> you meditate, you do yoga, you let it transpire, and you go on. You focus on the rest of your life. Don't. My divorce took 15 months because we kept getting bumped. The, the court docket's always behind, and they fix that by taking one trial out of the list and pushing it to the back of the line. They did that twice for us. We got pushed to the back of the line twice. 15 months later, I signed the stipulation that my ex-wife proposed at the first meeting, 15 months before. I paid the lawyer $22,000 to get us there. He told me over 15 months, Steve, once we get you in front of a judge and you tell your story, you're very compelling. Nobody can stop. She'll listen to you. The judge will listen to your story. Just wait, just wait, and keep paying me money. People talk about bar girls in Thailand being after your money. Dude, no bar girl in Thailand is salacious as an Iowa divorce lawyer. God knows what they're like in LA and New York. In Iowa, they're sharks to their own clients. So anyway, <laughs> don't let that happen. Don't let the sequelae, don't let the, the, the side effects of the disease hurt you more than the disease. Just deal rationally and calmly with the divorce and get through it. Man, just get through it. And then you can focus on rebuilding your life. And look at me, right? 
I found my Turtle Beach. I wish, you know, I had come here years ago, but shit happens. But now that I'm here 14 months, man, I'm healing. I'm not healed. I'm healing every single day. And you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it too. It won't be here. This is not your Turtle Beach. This is only for Steve. Come, have a cup of coffee. I've actually got two beers in the fridge today. <laughs> if you show up, there's beer. I got iced coffee. I got hot coffee. I got, I got cocoa. Hey, whatever you want. Come, have a cocoa talk. And then go find your Turtle Beach. If you want, you can help me clean lighters. That's the hardest part of the whole project. All right. That's my 9-11 story <clears throat> about divorce. Because when you're in it, man, everything's about the divorce. Thank you for listening. I love you guys. Thank you so much. This is the best day of my week. Uh, uh, after this, there'll be an update on the turtle, which is going to be afloat in the, the turtle festival parade. And... Uh, there was one other thing I was going to tell you. Oh, I'm having t-shirts made. <laughs> Boontong's t-shirts. They're not done yet. But I'll sell some t-shirts, some gack, and see how that goes. If you like a t-shirt, let me know. Uh, maybe ashtrays. <laughs> Boontong's ashtrays, baby. Matchbooks. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's, a, that's the news from Turtle Beach. Thank you all very, Jesus, 16 minutes. I'm out of here. Goodbye. Have a great week. I love you a lot. Shaves your sheep, whatever bakes your glam Whatever digs your peak, whatever smokes your ham Whatever blows your nose, whatever chews your bone Whatever squirts your hose, whatever sings your song Do it after but do it well Nobody knows and there's no way to tell when you ride and it's that chimney down to the new big up a blue yard do it that day. A cheer lip, a cheer lip, a cheer up shoot down to that jam door.